Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, excuse me. Good morning. <laughs> this is what you missed yesterday. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry, that was good. Okay. Great. Check out the key. The data. Oh, okay. <laughs> Okay, everybody, take your seat. So just one announcement. Uh, as it's written on the program, um, this evening we have the social dinner, which will be up here on the terrace where we have the coffee breaks. Um, hopefully there will be plenty of food. At least we, we, plan, we plan for that. So, yeah, be around after the, the end of the last lecture today. Okay, so this morning we have um, Werner Kraut for his third lecture on uh, introduction to Monte Carlo. And then again we have a coffee break and then the first lecture by uh, Deepak Dar. Okay. They're all yours. Okay. So good morning again, and uh, bravo, as we say in French, for having had the strength of, for coming today, this morning. So today, um, I have um, a very tight program. So today there will be no jokes, and uh, I will go straight through. I'll be very, very serious, much more serious than the first days, because uh, I have, anyway, so I have no time to leave. We will, do, uh, we will have um, two parts. First part is exploring detailed balance and global balance. And um, as yesterday, I give you further reading for today. In this first part, there is the uh, original paper by Metropolis et al., 1953. <coughs> A very insightful paper. We will go through some details that are, uh, some aspects that are very little known and then to recent papers of myself where you can read um, where can, you can read through if you lost a little bit the uh, contact with what we're doing. The, pioneer in, um, the pioneers in this field of exploring global balance are mathematicians or statisticians uh, called Diaconis, Holmes, and Niels, and they wrote a really insight, very, very interesting article in a mathematics journal but which is also, as, I, as uh, I would not have put it here if I didn't think that it is accessible to everybody. So in my opinion, um, we will go through, we will, uh, so we will go through and we will touch on this um, idea. It's called the lifting idea, which has considerably uh, renewed the, first the theory and now the practice of Monte Carlo calculations. In the second part, we, I will discuss the Metropolis-Hastings algorithm on our little example of computing pi. It's called the triangle algorithm. I call it the triangle algorithm. And if I have time, I'll go to cluster algorithms. And there are two sections in, in my book. I don't put this here just so that you see my name. It's just uh, that uh, if you get lost, uh, then you can read uh, through here. The original paper on where I hope to get today um, is by Uli Wolf, 19, 1989. It's one of these papers that I can, uh, I still have the, the visual impression in 1989 to have, see, at the time we had preprints, and I picked up this preprint, and I just was, I was just amazed at this paper, and I have been amazed by this, uh, by this article, as by, by the, other, <laughs> the other articles uh, for a long time. So this is also how you recognize a really fantastic paper. 30, maybe, you're not, maybe not in this situation, but long time later, you still remember where you were standing when you first read this paper. Anyway, so this is the way with me. And maybe you are different, but uh, so. Anyway, so let us uh, explore detailed balance and, uh, I, uh, and global balance. I will have a very slight overlap with uh, Professor Deepak Dar who will uh, speak about uh, uh, hard core um, models. We checked yesterday that we didn't have, that the overlap was finite but not uh, too large. 
So I will discuss uh, how to fear systems also. But before this, let us remember that the detailed balance condition is um, pi C P from C to C prime is equal to pi C prime P from C prime to C. So in, another, in other words, this we, we call this the flow from C to C prime had to be equal to flow from C prime to C. This was the detailed balance condition. The global balance condition, um, just put it here again, is pi of C is sum over all the C primes, including C, P from C prime to C times pi of C prime. So which means that the, so the, the total flow, so this is the flow from C prime to C, and the sum over this flow is, we call this the total flow flow into C, and this flow into C must be equal to pi C. So this is this condition that we have to check in order to be sure that the global balance condition is satisfied. If the global balance condition is satisfied, if we have aperiodicity, if we have irreducibility, uh, then we know that the algorithm will, uh, is mixing and will mix and will converge towards, uh, towards uh, the probability distribution pi. So the model I will look at now is the one-dimensional version of the original model that was treated in, uh, in, the, uh, in the paper by Metropolis et al. 1953. It is the model of hard spheres, but I only do it in one dimension. <coughs> so I have n hard spheres, hard spheres of radius sigma, on a ring of length L, um, and each of these configurations, each of the legal configurations is equally likely, we can write this as a partition function, which is an integral dx1 dxn, so this is the variable x going this direction. I have periodic boundary conditions. Pi of x1 xn and pi of x1 xn is equal to 1 if we have a legal configuration and 0 if we have an overlap. So there will be a little, a little question about permutations. I just put the word permutations here. So the question is whether we have particle 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to n. And then uh, uh, there are two versions of this model. One version is where, where I demand that the labels also get, get mixed up, and one where I don't care, care about labels fundamentally. I will mostly not care about labels. In fact, I will also not care about the whole system making. So then I also, uh, I'm interested in, well, anyway, so we'll go into details. I don't actually, so I make some simplifying uh, it's not even approximations, but I don't treat the whole system. It, it's all its complexity. Um, but uh, in, in, in particular, I'm not so interested in permutations. So, believe it or not, I have, on these two pages, I have nine algorithms. Uh, last night, I decided to uh, 
make you a present, I will only speak about seven of them. This was a very, very difficult decision. Uh, but uh, I think I will leave it at seven because too much will simply be just too much. But uh, I, will have to pre I will have the pleasure of presenting you seven algorithms. Uh, two of them, uh, three of them really old. And uh, three plus how much makes seven? And four of them uh, from last year. Which still amazes me because uh, this is so simple. So algorithm number one is, I told you yesterday, uh, yesterday and before, that yesterday, that the Metropolis algorithm, the Metropolis algorithm was just one algorithm to enforce the detailed balance condition. And the other algorithm is called the heat bath algorithm. And to, um, to follow up on this, uh, I'll explain to you first the heat bath algorithm. And this algorithm is the following. I have a configuration. So now I do the, uh, do the following. I have a configuration. I just draw part of it. And at time t, I have a configuration c with particle i sitting somewhere. So now what I do is I simply take out particle i. Intermediate, I do an intermediate step, even though this costs me 30 seconds. So this may be a minus 1, a plus, uh, i minus 1, i plus uh, 1. So I take it out. And then I push it, put it back. So I close my eyes. I put it back in a random, you know. Yeah. So this is a random position because uh, I tell you though. So, and I put it back at a random position between i minus one and i plus one. So the algorithm is sample i, so choose i randomly between 1 and n. Then uh, uh, it, it, it was at x i, and then replace it with an x i between x i plus 1 minus 2 sigma, I would say and x i minus 1 plus 2 sigma. All right. So let us check that this algorithm satisfies the detailed balance condition. Yeah, but OK, I do the following, because I'm not really, I'm not really committed to actually writing this. So I just say, replace x i. OK, you just replace x i somewhere. So now this algorithm satisfies detailed balance, because this is t plus 1, and this is configuration c prime. Because evidently, so pi of, uh, pi of c is equal to 1, must be equal to 1, pi of c prime must be equal to 1. So in order to satisfy the global balance condition, I must have the probability to go from here to here must be equal to the probability from here to here. And this, you realize that this is trivially satisfied because I can erase this particle, I get to this. I can erase this particle, I get to this. And the probability and both probabilities are the same. So detailed balance is OK, is satisfied. Now we can also check irreducibility. And one way, just, I want to give you an example of how you check it. It is 
you start from one initial condition, for example, just like this, one, two, n, which is a compact initial condition, and you just convince yourself that from this condition, from this initial state, from this state, you can reach by a sequence of well-engineered moves, you can reach any other configuration. All right. <coughs> and since we satisfy detailed balance, you can go back from any one to this one, and then you can from this configuration, this can be C, and then you can also get to any other configuration, C prime. So you can go from this to here, and from here to here, and so you, you have a, an indirect way. So there is, a, there is a sequence of moves. Well, I should have, I should draw the same number of particles. So you, there is a sequence of moves that gives you from C to C prime. So irreducibility is okay. Okay, okay. And the algorithm is aperiodic also because it has a finite, it has the possibility of, put the, of leaving the particle here, so it's aperiodic also. So, this is, so these two parts are kind of boring. Irreducibility. So there was a question uh, earlier today. In much of the physics uh, uh, literature, this what, what is called, what should be called irreducibility and aperiodicity is called ergodicity. And it creates a lot of confusion because ergodicity is something else. Yes? I am trying, oh, excuse me, I am trying to sample, I am trying to sample the, okay, I am trying to sample the uh, equilibrium, the, the, the probability distribution pi of x1, x2, xn. So I'm trying to get at, an, at a configuration where the probability of having a configuration x1, x2, x3, xn is the same for all x1 to xn, um, is the same for all x1, uh, x1 xn that are legal. So, I, so thanks, thanks for the question. So I'm trying to sample, all right. Okay, let me just say it here. So this is what, this is what we want to do today. Okay. And two days ago, we had the partition function, which was, okay, thanks, thanks again. So this was yesterday. So yesterday and the day before, we discussed two types of algorithm, direct sampling, where we simply threw a pebble into the square. So this is, let me put the, the picture. So this is simply particles in a square. But now I have a related problem. It is, it is this one. So it is true. But I will not discuss the phrase that for this particular case, I, I can show it to you in two minutes, for this particular case, there is a direct sampling algorithm. But I don't want to, dis uh, I, I, I mention it in two minutes, but I will not go through. So yesterday we discussed also for this algorithm, even though there was a direct, uh, direct sampling algorithm, which is the complete exception, I discussed Markov chain algorithms. So now we want to do the same. We want to, dis we want to discuss Markov chain algorithms to sample, to sample from any initial configurations to sample an orbit and uh, to, to sample this integral. And we will discuss at the end of, the, uh, of, the, of this hour, we will have, a, I'll, I'll tell you about uh, the mixing times, how long it takes 
to go from one config from a, an arbitrary initial configuration towards the equilibrium. So one algorithm of this is you start with an initial configuration and you replace particle i, then you pa replace particle j, then you replace particle k, then you replace and so on and so on. And if you do this long enough, the uh, theorems that we have proven show you that the configuration that you will, s will see is an, is, an, uh, is, an, uh, is, an, is an configuration taken from the equilibrium distribution. Thanks again for the question. So now, yes? Oh, that's what I said. Uh, so I'm not so much interested into the per per permutation uh, problem. So and if I don't do this, um, so I don't uh, don't exchange. I don't allow the particle to go from here uh, somewhere. Then of course the permutation. So I consider what I consider local algorithms. This is what I'm really interested in because this is what I can then later on take to higher dimensions. Of course, I'm not so you know I'm really interested in having a toy model for higher dimensional uh, uh, algorithms, and there, I'm uh, so I'm, I, I study local algorithms. So let me put it here. So this is the local heat path algorithm, and even though the, the local heat path algorithm does not exchange the permutations, uh, it will get uh, the, co the configurations into equilibrium. So this one will sample this distribution up to, uh, uh, up to, uh, uh, but it, uh, up to uh, uh, relabeling of particles. So let, it, let me do. Let me give one, uh, one theorem, if you want to, <laughs> which may be related to what uh, Professor uh, Da will, will, uh, will mention later. So here I have a configuration of hard spheres with radius sigma on, a, on an uh, interval L. And if you watch carefully, I take this interval, which makes, makes uh, three centimeters, no, 4.5 centimeters, I put it here. This makes 2.7 centimeters. This makes Okay, so here I have a hard sphere configuration. On a, length, on a ring of length L with particles of diameter two sigma. Here I have an equivalent configuration of point particles. on a ring of which length? Yes, even though I think you should uh, speak up, but uh, we speak louder. So this is L prime is equal to L minus two N sigma, and these two are equivalent. And now you see also that now I can run the, I can run the heat path algorithm on this configuration or on this configuration, and they are just the same. So a Mar Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithm on this configuration is the same as the same Markov chain Monte Carlo algorithm with the same random number on this configuration. And what this shows is this is simply point particles on a ring, and this can be used to show that the partition, or this is really, I mean, if you think about it, it's clear that the partition function of this system is in fact L minus two N sigma to the power of N divided by N factorial on the left and on the right. And uh, even though I don't want to go into into detail, the reason that we can compute the partition function of this system exactly, where were you? The reason that we can compute the partition function exactly shows me that there must be a direct sampling algorithm. And uh, it's very easy to, to, to sync it up. 
So this is also because the Markov chain, the, the heat path algorithm for this thing here, which is simply point particles on a ring, is the same as this one. It's step by step equivalent can be, can be used or is, uh, implies immediately that this system cannot have a phase transition as a function uh, uh, at any finite packing. All right, so the second algorithm that I want to discuss, my list of seven, is the Metropolis algorithm. Yes? Well, what I simply do is I freeze. To give a simple answer, I freeze n minus one uh, degrees of freedom. Then I have a single particle problem. And this single particle problem can be solved by direct sampling. So this is what I'm doing. So, let me, so the general point is I'm taking my whole configuration. I freeze it. Okay, I freeze the position of I minus one, I plus one, and then I solve the problem of how to equilibrate this particle here, this particle here in the environment of all the other particles. So if you have some interactions, then you have simply have to solve this problem for a single particle, and usually you can solve it. Okay? Yes? Well, because uh, this is the, the uh, comma, so I was answering this question, comma, because this corresponds to uh, equilibrating the single particle in the bath of all the other ones that, uh, that are. So this is called heat bath. So now, second algorithm. Yes? It's just a name. So uh, you could imagine that you have uh, you fix the n particles, and then you have little little demon, demons that that push the single particle around for a long time, and if it moves around, so the particle i, if it moves around, then after a while it will end up at a at a at a random position. All right. So now a Metropolis algorithm. The Metropolis algorithm <coughs> is the one where I have particles I minus one, I, I plus one, or other labels. It consists in the following. I sample Particle i, this word sampling, I must admit to you that it took me two years to understand. I had a famous teacher called David Sepperly in really the king of quantum Monte Carlo algorithms, and I spent years with him, and he always said, you sample, and then you sample and sample. I never understood what it actually means. So sample, <laughs> and now I do the same thing. So sample simply means you choose a random particle between one and n. Okay, so you sample, you take an example of the distribution of, of, of the elements one to n. So you take, uh, you take particle from one to n, then you move i <coughs> from xi to xi plus or minus epsilon. And this epsilon is the displacement. Well, in fact, we called it delta before, but now let me do it epsilon. And the epsilon has a property that it is some distribution that is uh, pi of, uh, p of epsilon is equal to 1. And then you do one more thing, or try to move, and you don't allow 
overlaps and you don't allow jumps. So what this means is you take the particle here, you try to move it by epsilon plus epsilon or minus epsilon, and you put it here. Or what could happen, so then if it's like this, then this is the configuration at t, this is configuration c, and then at t plus 1, you have this configuration. Okay? But if you take this particle and you move it over particle i plus 1, you leave it where it is, and this corresponds just to connect you to the, to the, to the situation of yesterday. This means that you, that you, at t plus 1, you have the same configuration at, as at t, and this makes, you means you make a little pile of these configurations. So you don't allow move over here, and you don't allow a move where you would have an overlap between, uh, between, the, the, between two, two spheres. So now, of course, this algorithm satisfies detailed balance because the probability, if, so this plus or minus is chosen with probability 0.5 each. So with equal probability, you go to the right, which for me is the left, and with equal probability, you go to the left. And because you go this way, in this, in this way, the probability to move from here and make the move by minus epsilon from here to here is the same as the, proof, the probability to have make a move from plus epsilon from here to here, and you have detailed balance. And aperiodicity and irreducibility and ta 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 and so on. So now, it is not too early to get into it's not too early to get into the thick of it so now until now it was really easy but now it will get it will get really complic very very complicated all right so this was detailed balance is okay Is okay. But now I want to check that the Metropolis algorithm also satisfies the global balance condition. You will tell me that this is kind of easy because the detailed balance condition implies the global balance condition, and so, you know, there's nothing to compute. So you can go back to sleep. <laughs> But uh, uh, maybe you don't do this because now I want, to comp uh, I want to show explicitly that the global balance condition is true. The global balance condition just escaped my attempt to erase everything. You see it here. This is the global balance condition. And now let us check that this algorithm satisfies the global balance condition. To do this, you can read this up. So now we moved from 1953 to 2017. It's really, it's really pathetic. So here I have I minus 1. Here I have I plus 1. And here I have I. So now I have to check the pi is the pi's all the pi's are equal to 1. So now I have to check what is the flow into this configuration. Where can I have come from to have reached this configuration? This is what this what this condition means, right? It means 
So this is the probability to go from C prime to C. And I have to sum up over all the ways to get into this configuration. So what, there are four possibilities. One possibility is I was here and I moved here. Second possibility is I was here and I moved back. Third possibility is I tried to move here. Is, excuse me, I put myself here. I tried to move here, but this move was rejected. So if the move is rejected, I stay where I was. And fourth possibility, I tried to move too far, and this move was rejected. You are free to ask questions, because this is what I want to discuss in the next uh, two minutes. So now, let me show this, let me show this, uh, <coughs> these possibilities explicitly. So, it is possible that I try to move. So this particle wanted to move by minus, by epsilon into the, uh, into the negative direction, but it went too far. It would have gone too far, so I go back. Yes? No, no, it, and, uh, just suppose that we move particle i. At the end, I'll do a sum over all i. So this is a flow that I call rejected minus by epsilon of i. I'll do a sum over all i's a little later. You understand? Because if the move is rejected, I'll stay where I am, and then I get this configuration that I started with. The other possibility is that I was here. And I moved to this configuration. So this is, of course, another epsilon. And this other epsilon comes with an accepted flow by epsilon in the plus direction. Are you following? So I have four possibilities. Possibility number three is that I try to move forward, but I try to move too far forward, and I move back. I, I, so I was rejected, and I stay where I was. So this is a flow R I plus of epsilon. And the final possibility is that the initial configuration was i minus 1 here, i plus 1 here, at the same positions at here. I was positioned here at i, and I moved back. And this is given by an accepted flow minus by some epsilon of particle i. So now, I can write that the flow into configuration, so this is configuration C. The flow into this configuration C is, I take up what you, what you wanted me to write from the beginning, is I have the choice of n particles. I choose i from 1 to n. Then I had the choice of going forward or backward. So it's 1 over 2n. Sum over i of accepted i plus of epsilon. So all of this must be integrated over epsilon plus r i 
minus of epsilon plus <coughs> a minus of epsilon of a plus r plus i of epsilon. And all of this to be integrated from zero to infinity over the epsilon. So now a beautiful thing happens. And this is if this move is if the, if epsilon is such that this move by minus epsilon would be rejected, then I cannot have moved particle i by epsilon. Let me show it. So what happens the accepted flow in plus direction by epsilon plus the rejected flow minus by epsilon is equal to 1. So this is particle this is particle i and this is particle i minus 1. Okay, if epsilon is such that I could have moved here Okay, I could have moved from here to here. Then it is clear that the move minus epsilon cannot have been rejected. So one of the two is true. So this is this. If, this is, if there is enough space, and if there is not enough space, then it, uh, uh, it can be rejected. Anyway, so you have this, and you have also A I minus of epsilon plus r plus of epsilon is equal to 1. And then, fortunately, OK, it's really, really easy. Fortunately, what happens, what you saw that all of this is, uh, is equal to 1 plus 1. So this thing here is equal to 2. And this makes some 1 over 2n, sum over i from 1 to n times 2 means equal to 1. Yes? What? Pi of epsilon? Oh, uh, that I'm... That I'm saying, I'm, I have to integrate the whole over d epsilon, p of epsilon. Okay, but because I have uh, this e this equality for each epsilon, so I integrate the function one over all epsilon, so the epsilon drops out. So it's not so complicated. Which is it took us like a day or two to realize that this was really easy. Okay, so now. The flow into this configuration is 1, and we satisfy global balance, which, of course, the two of us, we knew it immediately. And, but we are happy to have uh, realized this. But this gives, OK. So this is what we, what we have done. So now let us go to another algorithm, number 3. I have moved up to 3. Let me put. Yes? Yes, so, uh, yes, exactly. So there is some normalization that I don't uh, take into account. I'm just saying that there's a probability density which is equal to 1. Okay? This is also what I used in the in the computing of the partition function, I compute every, everything as one. And? 
Well, the difference is in the heat bus algorithm, I take the particle out and I put it at, an, at a new place. And uh, the metropolis algorithm, I take the configuration and I move it by epsilon. No. Yes, of course, of course, yes. Take, take, the, you know, take, a, take, a, take a, a simple distribution. Take a simple, dis say, take some distribution. You know, it will work, it will, you know, just take some distribution, okay. I, of course, there's much to be said, but don't allow uh, uh, hopping. So now, let me move on a little bit. But of course, so then, um, okay. Yes, so, but, but thank you, of course, there should be some distribution, but it should be something like this. But there should, there, that doesn't have to be a cutoff. It can go, it can go to infinity. It should, it should allow small movements and large movements and, uh, and so on. So now, let me do something. Let me go, you know, using the principle of liberty and egalité. French principle, I now move to your side so that uh, you know, there's e e equality, egality between those sitting there and sitting here. And I'd even draw as large as possible so we have egality between those sitting in the back and sitting in the front. So now I do another algorithm, which is the sequential. Now things become more complicated. I do the sequential Metropolis algorithm. The sequential pro, uh, metropolis algorithm is I don't sample, so in the, I don't sample I, but what I do is I take I, don't sample I, Use i equals 1, 2, 3, up to n. When you're done, then you start again, 1, 2, 3, up to n, or any other sequence. Containing all i's. So now we pose the question. So I take particle 1. Try to move it, then I take particle two, try to move it, then I take particle three, try to move it, then I take particle four and try to move it. Does this algorithm satisfy detailed balance? Certainly not. Because uh, if, I move from I, if I move this particle, then the next particle cannot be the same one moving back, then the next one is the particle I plus one and so on and so on. So if I have made this move, for example, moving particle I from here to here, then the next particle to move is this one, and I cannot move back, so I, I violate the detailed balance condition. So now, but I, all the other things are the same. I take particle I, I, take particle I I move it to plus epsilon or minus, uh, minus epsilon, and I accept or reject with the same rule like this. So now I have to check that the global balance condition is satisfied. I have particle I minus 1, I plus 1, here I have I. And let us say, I just moved particle i. This is something, well, I just watch which particle was just moved. It was this particle. So what is the flow into this configuration? What is the, co so this is configuration c at some time t. What is the flow into this configuration?
the flow into C. Well, it can only come from moves or attempted moves of particle I. And then, so now, I used to have a 1 over 2n because n was the choice of I. But now I only have a, 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 a factor 1 over 2 because I could have moved particle I or attempted to move forward or backward. And then I have A I plus of epsilon plus R I minus of epsilon plus A I minus of epsilon plus R I plus of epsilon. You see? What is it? It's equal to 1. So this sampling stage is unnecessary. So I can do sequential updates of particle I, uh, of, of particles, first one, two, three, wherever they sit. Or I can update one, then four, then three, then five. And this is one. And the sequential algorithm satisfies global balance. Now I can give a historical note. If you read carefully the article by Metropolis et al., they in fact used the, the sequential Metropolis algorithm. They never invented what we call the Metropolis algorithm, which satisfies detailed balance. They immediately used an algorithm that satisfies global balance. Yes? Yes. It's larger. No, it's smaller. it's smaller. Of course it's smaller. It's, by, it's smaller by, I, I give, a, a, at, the end, okay, yeah. I, at the end, I give a list of uh, correlation times. It is the same order of magnitude. I must say that there is no mathematical proof of the uh, correlation time. It's only simulation. For the, for the heat bath algorithm, we have mathematical proof. And uh, it's of the same order, but it is um, a little faster. But now I don't want to, of course, I don't want to use up your, your precious time explaining things that were uh, invented already in 1953. Let's move forward a little bit. Let's do algorithm number four on the same. Algorithm number four is, you know, what, now I, I started out with the Metropolis algorithm moving forward and backward and taking any particle from one to n. So now I notice that I don't have to use a sample particle i. I can take 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So now we become more radical. And we say, why should we move forward and backward? Right? Then we do the forward metropolis algorithm. The forward metropolis means sample i <coughs> and then update xi going to xi plus epsilon. So what this means, I have my configuration and I take a particle at random, I move it forward. Then I take another particle, I move it forward. Then I take another particle, I move it forward. Then I take another particle, I move it forward. So this is uh, a continuum version of uh, the total, what in, in a discrete version is the total, um, asym uh, total asymmetric simple exclusion, uh, totally asymmetric simple exclusion process that was solved by Professor Dar a long time ago.
So the forward metropolis algorithm, I'm only at four out of nine, uh, seven, excuse me. The forward algorithm, as I told you, is you take particle and you only move forward. So this is configuration C. And what is the flow into this configuration? Is I choose I from 1 to N. sum over i, a i plus, plus, i plus of epsilon. But I can write this sum. using periodic boundary conditions in my system and even using periodic boundary conditions in the sum from i from 1 to n, so, so the right neighbor of n is 1, I can write it as a i plus of epsilon plus r i minus 1 plus of epsilon. So let me do again the presentation. So this is particle i, and this is particle i minus 1. Okay? i and i minus 1. So if I could have moved particle i from here to here, so if epsilon is only this big, Okay, epsilon is this, is, big, is this big? Then I cannot have rejected the move of i minus 1 because epsilon is too small. So this means that a i, I of epsilon plus r, the rejected, of i minus 1 is equal to 1. Let me do it again. So epsilon is small. That, mean, that means that this means that a i of epsilon is one, and the rejectin. So then, if I move this one by epsilon, I would actually go there. Okay. So these two are equal to one, and this means that I have one over n sum over i times one, which is equal to one. So this means that the forward metropolis algorithm consisting of sampling i and um, moving only forward also satisfies the global balance condition. I'll show you a little later that this algorithm is really interesting because in the limit of n going to infinity, it is infinite, an infinite time, uh, infinitely uh, fast, much faster than the other algorithms. So now things become really interesting. The exponent was, is the same as the one computed by Professor Dar a uh, long time ago, even though it's the exponent for the mixing time and it's not the exponent for the correlation time that was computed at that time. Yes? Yes. Well, it's, they can have different rates, but so in some sense it's the same. Because it is true, so what we have is R i epsilon plus R mi a, uh, i minus 1 of epsilon is equal to 1, but it's not true that a i plus R i is equal to 1. So I have to have the sampling stage. So this bugged us, and now the last algorithm that I showed before the break is yes. So 
So, so this is the forward metropolis cannot be used in sequential version. Okay? So I must sample which one I want to move, and then I move it, and then I move it. Unless, unless you think very hard <laughs> for about two minutes, unless you think very hard, and this brings me to the final algorithm before the break. Number five. So the forward metropolis algorithm, sample i, update i from x i to x i plus one. And now I told you it is possible, now I, but now I do the forward, I do the sequential. The, the, the names get longer and longer. And the reason why I stop at seven is because they become so long that I need the whole blackboard to name them. Algorithm. With relabeling. And this is work I just did with uh, Zile at ENS. So now I have an algorithm, it's like this. I have, let's do it like this. I change labels. <laughs> so I explain the algorithm. I go only forward. And there are two outcomes. So if I want to make a, f a move that is accepted, so if I move like this, then the new configuration will be K J and I. So this is configuration C at time T, and this would be configuration C prime at time T plus one. But now, let's say the move is too far. I cannot accept it. And then in the original version, I said, well, let's stop where I am. But now I do the following. If the move goes too far, so I want to move particle i to here, then I place it here. But if it's too far, then I arrive at configuration k. So it's, it must be the same configuration. But now I do a relabeling. I call this particle J and this particle I. I find it really, uh, I find it, you understand what I'm doing? Okay, it's the break already, so be, I, will, I will stop. Okay, so what I'm doing is the following. I try to move. Let me not do it with my head. So I have this particle particle i. If I can move it, then I move it. But if the move is too far, what I do is then I swap the two. It's, you say that it's the same, right? So it, it, it should be this. So now let me ask, where can this configuration, where I just updated i, where can it have come from? And this configuration can have come from a configuration where I was a little bit to the left, and then I moved forward, I moved here. Or it could have come from a configuration, from the same configuration as this one, but where this one was particle I. K and J. And now you see that the flow, if I just updated I, the flow into this configuration C is 
I updated I. <laughs> it is one half A I plus of epsilon plus R I plus of epsilon. But now, as it was this particle, which was before was I minus one in the previous arg argument, so then this is equal to one. No, oh no, no, it, all the algorithms since the last uh, 30 minutes, it violates detailed balance, but it satisfies the global balance condition because the flow into this configuration is equal to the statistical rate of the configuration, which is equal to one. So now, let me just resume, but now I have really have to break. So this, I had the heat bath algorithm, I had the metropolis algorithm, I had the sequential metropolis algorithm, the forward metropolis algorithm, and the sequential forward metropolis algorithm, and only two of them satisfied the detailed balance condition, and three of them already satisfied the global balance condition. And now I liberate you, because the third principle in France is liberté. Okay, égalité is not enough. You also need the liberty to go out and take 10 minutes of break from these, all these algorithms. And we meet again at 15. Yes, yes.
No, thank you. Um, there was a, there was a, a question of uh, whether this was just um, uh, this was just games for you know one D and stuff for it was this game or whether this was serious stuff. And um, so the answer I want to give it now is um, I would of course not abuse of your time of your precious time. Uh, multiplied by 100, uh, if this was only, if this only applied to one-dimensional hard sphere systems that we can solve analytically anyway. So of course the algorithms that I present to you have a deep meaning as uh, hard sphere models have had a deep meaning in Monte Carlo algorithms since uh, Metropolis uh, in 1953. They presented the Metropolis algorithm for hard spheres but of course they understood that the algorithm generalized to more, more complicated model. In, particularly, in particular, some of uh, the, the models that I will now go into, the, the algorithms I go into, of course generalize to higher than one dimension. They of course generalize to arbitrary interaction. And to give you an idea, I use the algorithm, in fact, that I will present the, the algorithm number six in some version. We are using it right now for problems for solving problems related to the Coulomb plasma, so particles with long range interactions, so they have nothing in three dimensions, real particles with water molecules, and so on and so on. So of course we would not, we would not as I said, uh, we would not waste your time if this only was a hot sphere uh, example. So now let me go to algorithm number six the penultimate algorithm in this list, which is the lifted, it is the lifted forward So this algorithm is um, really important. I think, in my opinion, it's really important. And it was uh, more or less, of course, we uh, uh, represented it last year. But it is very closely related to what is called the lifting idea, which, goes, which traces back to Diaconis, uh, Holmes, and Neil. And if you have a very good memory, you remember that the name of uh, Percy Diaconis was already uh, on, on my recommended reading list yesterday in this um, really nice article from 2011, which is called um, The Art of uh, uh, Mixing Things Up, The Mathematics of Mixing Things Up. So lifted forward metropolis algorithm is the following. is you have a configuration C and you single out one particle and this is the particle I. So now uh, the algorithm is following. It is a forward metropolis algorithm. That means you only move in the forward direction and particle I is singled out, and you, you, you sample, uh, you sample a displacement of epsilon, and you move it forward. Next move is you take the same particle, it's related to questions I had just before, you take the same particle and you move it forward. Next move is you take the same particle and you move it forward, but now something happens, the move is rejected. Now what happens is that this, what is called the lifting index is taken away. So let's say the lifting index is this. I always move the particle that has the chalk. So I move this particle, and then I move the particle again, and then I move. So now I want to move, but the move is rejected. 
So what the move is now, it's called a lifting move, it is this. Okay? So the move, as I said, as I just explained, so the move is the following. You go from here by some epsilon, which is positive, and the next configuration is this one. But if the epsilon is too large, <laughs> you want to move like this, then the new configuration, okay, let me, just for more clarity, so, so is, if the particle move is accepted, is accepted, then you do the particle move. But if the particle move is rejected, then the move that you do is the particles remain where you are, but it's this particle that moves the next. So this is configuration at time t, and this is configuration at t plus 1. Okay, so this is kind of strange. So, but it is a it is a true it is a true uh, Monte Carlo algorithm. So let me just do again a simulation of the lifting move. The lifting move means that um, I keep I freeze the particle configuration, and I move from this configuration to this configuration. So this is called a lifting. So this is a particle move. I have it here, particle move. And this is a lifting move. I have noticed since the beginning of this series that uh, there are a few people here who are very interested in semantics. They want to know why is an algorithm called, uh, you know, this or that. So why is it called a lifting move? And the reason why it's called a lifting move is you have a config. So all before we have a configuration C, C was C was the n particle coordinates, and this configuration C gets now lift it in n configurations, see if one is, uh, is the, uh, the active particle, the particle that moves, see where two is the active particle, see where i is the active particle. You know, you see, to, uh, to describe this configuration now, I need n plus one variables n real variables and one index of the particle that is moving. And this, in the original inspiration of the authors, corresponded to have a configuration, and then I just take n copies of them, and they had the idea that these n, that the, these n copies are kind of lifted on top of the old copy. Then later on, in order to compute observables, then I, I uh, I decompose, uh, I undo the lifting, and I do a reduction. So this means I have a configuration C, I, and this either goes to C prime, I, or it goes to the configuration C, and then let's call this I plus one, if we keep the, the order. So the, I can move from C, I, color, to C prime, I, or to C uh, I prime or I, I plus one. Now this algorithm, of course, does not satisfy detailed balance. We, are, we, we have for, almost forgotten what detailed balance meant. We don't, I have a hard time remember what detailed balance means because I don't, I don't use it at all anymore. But now, what I, what I'm, what we are all, what we all get get to be uh, be uh, experts in is well, how do we check that this algorithm satisfies the global balance condition? Well, the way I, 
uh, we check this is we have to compute what, are all, what is the flow into this configuration. Well, the flow into this configuration is either a particle move Okay, so it's a particle move. It goes from here to here. Okay, so it's epsilon was smaller than this, this interspace. So I moved this particle from here to here, and this is how I could go, uh, gotten here. The other possibility is that previously the configuration was this one, just the same as this. Then I tried to move it too far. And this move was rejected, so now the active particle is no longer this one or this one. You realize that for hard spheres, and even though this algorithm can be generalized to Coulomb systems, to any, any, any system that you want, and to any dimension, uh, I'll show you later how to any dimension. So either this is realized, either epsilon was smaller than this thing here, then this configuration could have, could have, can have come only from here, or epsilon was larger than these 2.5 centimeters, then I'm, I must have come from here. So this plus this is one, and the flow into the configuration C i is equal to one. So this means that the lifted forward metropolis algorithm satisfies the global balance condition. All right, and now I have, yes? I don't have to sample I. I just take uh, at the beginning of, but this is what I'll do in just one second. I don't sample I, I sample I because this chain is infinite. So it ha I have an infinite chain, and the initial configuration doesn't count. It's just like starting up in the upper right corner. But so uh, exactly. So what exactly? What so now I, I'll do exactly what you what you kind of propose. So this is the lifted forward metropolis algorithm, and now I have the great regret of showing the final algorithm. I really regret because we could go on for longer, but we have to stop. Just like yesterday, right? That was we were in front of a birreria, which is my favorite birreria. But we we made a common decision to go home because I still had to prepare, and we did not have a beer. So it's the same kind of regret that I now show you the final <laughs> the final algorithm, and it's exactly the algorithm that you may have proposed just two minutes ago. Uh, it is the following. I do the lifted forward algorithm with three starts. With three starts. So what, is it, what does it correspond to? So who posed the question? You did, right? So what is the algorithm? I sample i, then I move particle, then I do this lifted forward metropolis algorithm for 17 times. Then I take another i, I sample i, I move it for 27 times. Then I take another time, I move it for 315 times, and so on and so on. So I do. I do uh, the lifted, for, lifted algorithm, but then I stop it, and then I, I have to start with a random initial condition. Uh, I, a random, I have to, then I have to start with this random sample of the same thing. Unless, so this would, be, would have been algorithm number eight, but um, you know, just like in the Birreria yesterday, we don't do it, and we, we do other things. So the lifted forward metropolis is sample I, Sample, so this is the particle index. Sample, a parameter that we call L, which is the repetition, the number of 
times that we will run the lifted forward. And then, and then we pick I and we move it, we take this as the active particle and we move it on. So, on. so this algorithm, of course, also satisfies the global balance condition. And now, let me conclude. Yes? I always satisfy the global balance condition. What I'm doing here? Yes. Well, I mean, uh, there was, uh, we had a lively discussion just in the break, and some of you presented other versions, and they just didn't, didn't work. For example, the, <laughs> yes, but for example, the forward metropolis algorithm, the sequential forward metropolis algorithm like this, does not satisfy the global balance condition. Yes, of course, but so you are complaining that I'm not doing um, too long calculations, so, but it is always trivial. That is what I'm showing. But nobody else does it. So nobody else does it, so then I have to do it. And I, I'm, really, I'm really surprised that everybody uh, has learned, you know, every, everybody who has done Monte Carlo knows how to, set, how to compute detailed balance condition where you take two configurations and you check that the flow from A to B is equal to the flow from B to A. And exactly what you are saying, this is my, my, the message I want to drive home, checking the flow into a configuration is just as easy. But you can be sure that uh, in the process of coming up with these nine algorithms, we had a number of other ones, and some of you here in the, in the break presented other algorithms and they just don't do, they just don't do it. But it's, you have to check it. But now, let me uh, do the following. Let me give the result of whether these algorithms are any good. And now, I'll do a table. <coughs> Mixing times. So, mixing times is, uh, what is the time to start from an, uh, from an arbitrarily bad initial configuration? And uh, you will believe me that the worst initial configuration that I can choose is having all particles glued, glued to, them, to each other. So having, you know, starting from the configuration, which is this, 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 on a circle. So what is the time? But uh, you know, then there can be proofs that this is actually the worst initial config configuration. What is the time that you take to get into equilibrium from this thing? So again, I wouldn't waste your time if the result was just that uh, all the nine algorithms are, you know, are in, in one percent among each other. So we don't do this. So the heat bath algorithm, Let us remember what it is. The heat bath algorithm is you take a particle, you raise it, and you replace it between its two neighbors. There is a proof now, since a few years, that the mixing time is of the order of n cube log n. Independent of density, independent of all of sigma, independent of L, independent of all parameters. And this is a mathematical result that is uh, due to Randall and Winkler about 10 years ago. It's a beautiful calculation, gives the first rigorous, this is a rigorous, rigorous result. It has been proven by coupling methods, upper bound, lower bound, and we were just, it was again the day when I read this paper, I was struck. I didn't do much else that day, I can tell you. So it has also a discrete version, which is called the simple exclusion process. And this is called SEP. 
And again, three years ago, Hubert Lacroix uh, proved that the mixing time of this algorithm is of the order of n cube log n. Um, uh, so now we have the metropolis algorithm. Metropolis algorithm, you take a particle and you try to move it forward or backward. The metropolis algorithm also has a mixing time. You know, I could put in a little O of n cube log n. It also has an n cube log n. This has not yet been proven rigorously mathematically because Randall and Winkler in another paper were able to prove that it's either n cube or n cube log n. But it is true that um, it is also n cube log n. So for example, in the heat pass algorithm, we have reasons to believe that the mixing time is n cube log n but that the correlation time is n cube. So there you see that the mixing time can be uh, infinitely longer in the limit of n going to infinity, and you see that uh, some logarithms have this um, tendency of creeping up. Now, the forward metropolis algorithm which was just the same <laughs> as the Metropolis algorithm, but with the, with the, with the change that I only moved, uh, moved, forward, moved in one direction. So this forward Metropolis algorithm uh, has a mixing time where the time is measured in the number of individual steps, which is n to the five, three, th five halves. This is, called, this is replaced, in, or this is uh, related to a discrete model which is called the totally asymmetric simple exclusion process, TASEP. The correlation time, in other words, the inverse or the, the gap of the transfer matrix was computed by Professor Dar. Um, the, the correlation time was computed uh, by Professor Dar to be of the order of n to the five, to five half. And since last year, there's a, there is a uh, rigorous mathematical result showing that also the mixing time is a, o, o of n to the five half. So this is a case where the mixing time and the correlation time scale in the same way. So now, the lifted forward. So let me put it here. So this is this is rigorous. This is rigorous. This is rigorous in the in the discrete version, and this is uh, the, uh, numerical. The lifted forward algorithm. Is, has also a mixing time of n to the 5 half, and this is again is a numerical result that we have. But now, the final algorithm that we discussed is the lifted forward with restarts. with restarts has a mixing time of O of n square log n. And this is a rigorous result that I obtained a few months ago with uh, Zillay uh, at ENS. So this is n square log n the lifted forward with restart, so it goes like n square. And the algorithms that I did not show, they are actually able to go to O of n square without the logarithm. And this is also a rigorous result, but this was not shown.
So now, I think I'll use the last five minutes because, uh, yes? Yes. 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 When I say rigorous, it means that, um, uh, or at least the f in the first one, it is, it is a rigorous proof. Yes. You can go through it. Uh, we have the references in our papers. So now, uh, we, have a, we had a, a discussion before uh, in, the, in the break, and one of you asked me to actually to explain how this can be generalized to higher dimensions. What is the idea of how, how can you generalize this to higher dimensions? And the way I want, to, uh, I want us to want to spend uh, two minutes on this, five minutes, I only do the hard sphere case, even though, as I told you, we can go, we can do um, anything else. Um, is the following, how to go to higher dimensions. and other interactions and quantum systems and whatever. So but all of this is possible. How to treat higher dimensions? What this treat means, treat means how to suck, abandon, detailed balance algorithm and go to global balance algorithms. But um, okay, this is what I will do. In let, let me let me let me open one parenthesis, and the one parenthesis I want to answer. I want it is related to what you just mentioned, and I just want to explain. Where does this logarithm come from? This logarithm comes from that using the restarts that we discussed, you have to cho choose each particle. And what happens if this is the initial configuration that you, that you start, then you may start with this one, but you cannot get very far. Then you may start with this one, and you can get, can get. So at some point, you will, you'll start, you'll, you'll, you'll look at this particle, and you'll move this particle. And this is called, um, you know, if you take, uh, you have n particles, and at each, time, at each time step, you take one particle of random, and you put it back. Then you take another particle and you take it back. You take another particle, you put it back. After which time have you seen every particle, each and every particle? You understand? You take a part, you n particles and you always put them back. After which time have you seen every particle? This problem is called the coupon collector problem. And it has an answer. And the answer is after n log n of the order of n log n trials, you have seen every particle. And this explains this logarithm. So now I come back how to treat how to treat higher dimensions. And uh, the idea is now we have hard spheres but they may be in two dimensions, they may be in three dimensions, and they may even have more complicated interactions. So now, I do the same, 
lift it forward. I do the lift it forward metropolis algorithm. So I sample this particle as the starting particle. I move it by epsilon. I would like to move it like this. So this is configuration time t. And the configuration at time t plus 1 is simply, I just draw the upper part. is simply this configuration. So the epsilons, let's say, are always in one direction. OK, I can, I can do this. I can also move in this way. I can do it in any direction. So now the configuration would be this one. So I should have protest from you, because um, imagine that the displacement was not this one by this epsilon, but it would be this particle by this epsilon. OK? You see that we are stuck now, because who will be the next particle that is going to move? In the lifted algorithm, I move the particle chuk, 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 until there is a rejection. And this rejection will then me, then I give, I give the chalk, OK? I give the chalk from this particle to this particle. But now, in higher dimension, I can have multiple overlaps. And to whom do I give the chalk? So do I give it, so if I have this, if I have this, Configuration, do I give the chalk to this one or do I give the, the chalk to this one is undecided. This is the chalk. Okay, so I can give it with probability p here or with probability p here. But then you will notice that very easy to see that then this gives, this, this makes the global balance condition break up badly, badly. So there's a solution. And the solution is, instead of moving by epsilon, which is a finite displacement, I just move it by an infinitesimal displacement. Now, this, there was a question on this thing also. What is the distribution of epsilon? Now, you ask the question. Now, I take epsilon just infinitesimal. But because I have the lifted forward metropolis, after, if the move is accepted, I'll move the same one, and I move the same one, I move the same one, I move always the same one until there is a rejection. This sounds really strange, right? Well, the probability for this to happen is zero in a, in a, continuum, in a continuum system. So, what, so the algorithm is the following. Take, take the epsilon going to zero limit with the repetition rate L going to infinity such that epsilon, the order of epsilon times L is constant. <laughs> and this algorithm has been my constant joy over the last uh, few years. It's, uh, we call it the event chain. So it's a, you do, you move until you, ha you have, you understand if I move, if I move this particle here, with infinitesimal displacements, that I'll certainly move, uh, I'll, I'll get here, or uh, first I get here or here, so then it will be a uniquely, uniquely defined particle with which I can exchange the lifting variable. And um, this is another algorithm that uh, we, we have used for, for many years. And we now we are happy to, be, to have been able to prove rigorously that this algorithm has a different dynamical scaling exponent. So in 1D, the dynamical scaling exponent should be 3 if we have detailed balance. And we have, if we have global balance, we have a dynamical scaling exponent of 2. All right, so this, um, but I don't want, it's a, whole, it's a whole new world. I can... Um, I can go on for, for many hours to discuss uh, more algorithms. Let me just make a, use the five. So I wanted to have a, another discussion on the Metropolis-Hastings, but uh, 
because we had such a lively discussion, I, I, didn't, I didn't do everything I wanted. I think that you will not um, uh, take this against me. But um, so let me do a resume uh, conclusion. So the resume of um, what I have been discussing, discussing I, I'll take your question in two minutes. So the resume of what we're discussing is, of our discussion was we have been um, presenting the, or I've been presented to you the fundamentals of the Monte Carlo method, which is um, a method traditionally based on a detailed balance condition where you go from one configuration to the other configuration with the same flow that you go from one, the other configuration to this configuration. In physics, we usually express this that we, when we go to the, from the, the, the distribution pi t, we go to the distribution pi, we call this, we approach equilibrium. So we start, for example, from this initial configuration, which is a non-equilibrium configuration, and then after a certain time, we have configurations that are nicely distributed and they are in equilibrium. Equilibrium exists in um, statistics, in the algorithms I presented to you, which means equilibrium in statistic means we approach, we go from pi t to the limit pi. In statistics, this is simply called the distribution, but in physics, we call this the equilibrium. Now, this is the equilibrium of the world of Monte Carlo, or of, of, of statistics. And, but there are other definitions of equilibrium, and one is the equilibrium in the chemical equilibrium, or the physical equilibrium. In chemical equilibrium means you have two species, one conformation, another conformation of some molecule, and equilibrium in, chemic, in chemistry means that the, that the rate of producing B from A is the same as the rate of producing A from B. So in chemical equilibrium, you naturally have the detailed balance condition because this is the detailed balance condition is the detailed balance condition of chemical equilibrium. What we've been discussing now for three days is that the true condition in the world, not of chemistry, but of statistics, is the global balance condition. The global balance condition is, an, is, a, is a condition of flow in equals to flow out, or someone in this audience has come up to me, this is simply a continuity equation. This is a continuity equation for the probability flow. What comes in must come out. This was maybe a little bit theoretical or abstract yesterday, but today it can no longer be abstract because all the algorithms that we showed, that we discussed today, have, we have periodic boundary conditions, otherwise there would be a problem. But besides that, they have a flow that strictly, that the algorithm four, five, six, seven, and I regret again not having been able to go to eight and nine. So four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine go all only in the forward direction. And the condition that we have that we have studied and we have verified, you say it's trivial, but it's uh, there are many algorithms that don't satisfy it anyway. But so what we have studied is for any co any configuration C, the flow in equals the flow out. So now, if we have chemical equilibrium, we have, of course, we have a basically, fundamentally diffusive process. So we go once to the right, then we go to the left, then we go up, then we go down, and the diffusive process comes with high values of the dynamical scaling exponents. The initial hope that we had when we started working on this is that when we have algorithms that are more convective, people move like this, particles move like this, but they don't go back, then instead of having an approach, an, uh, a diffusive approach to equilibrium, which, was, which is 
which is the, the, the world of detailed balance, we would have a convective one. The first result on, in this direction was the result by Diaconis et al. in this model, but only with a single particle, where they showed that you could go from a dynamical scaling of n square to n for a single particle. And now we have been able to extend this, showing that even in an n particle world, we can change the dynamical scaling, which after all is natural, because you all know that taking, putting sugar into your coffee and waiting until the sugar has dissolved takes a much longer time than if you take a spoon and turn it around. So these algorithms are specially designed such that you can spoon so that the configuration moves around like crazy. It always moves in this direction. In two or three dimensions, it's only moved plus x or plus y plus that. It never goes back. But all this spooning does not create eddies and does not change the equilibrium distribution that you actually sample. So what we are doing is we are mixing the world of equilibrium physics and non-equilibrium physics. We are using a hydrodynamic convective way of equilibrating, but the configurations that we visit, that we see, are exactly the same configurations that we would have if we used an equilibrium configuration. So, okay, too long, didn't read. So if you do the, if you do the resume of the resume, is I think in this, this world of statistics or of Monte Carlo algorithms, we are just at the beginning of science. And I think this is true for the, all the rest of you. Many of you don't work in exactly my field. I think we are not just there to do the final little bit of things that people have done before us. It's just the beginning and a really exciting time to be scientists. And so with this, I would like to thank you for your attention.